Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to all of you. A blessed and productive afternoon po sa ating lahat. Magandang hapon. It has been two weeks already since our last online engagement. And we are all pleased to have all of you again this afternoon. Join us for another two hours of relevant discussion. This afternoon, we'll talk about pedagogical issues in online learning. Welcome to our seventh webinar. I am Roel Paras, a Training and Development Officer of De La Salle University, Das Marinas, and I am with Dr. Grace Cella Mejia, the Tourism Management Department Chair, and we will be your host, moderator for this online engagement. Before we start our program, here are some online engagement rules and reminders. This webinar is recorded. The use to participate in the question and answer portion, you may use the Q&A chat box. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using the link the information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in DLSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and get your e-certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You only need to register once for the entire webinar series. For those who are encountering some problems, Check your device audio if it is turned on. If you are using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection. Restart your internet and or your device if needed. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on other application. If you're not using MS Teams, we suggest you download and use the, to participate the webinar. If using laptop, go to MS Team Profile, Settings, Devices, and select the appropriate audio device speaker. Now to get the certificate, watch out for the access code, which will be given to you before the end of the webinar. It will be shown later on. Log in to dlsudace.edu.com edu20.org, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. You can either go to the modules and look for the web evaluation or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. Now, to start our program, let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Once again, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Welcome to our webinar entitled Pedagogical Issues in Online Learning. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. At this point, to give this message, let us welcome our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you, Romel. Good afternoon to all of you and welcome to today's seminar. Right now, I see on my screen 67 participants, but hopefully uh, by the end of the session, we'll reach up to more than 100. That's what we would usually achieve uh, based on the past seminars. Today's topic is very interesting, a little bit heavy, if you come to think of it, because it talks about pedagogical issues in online learning. And admittedly, there have been a lot. Um, the usual way of doing things, our usual way of doing things as teachers, have been disturbed definitely uh, because of the pandemic. And more importantly, it has led us to ask which ways would be effective and which ways are not anymore applicable um, in terms of teaching and learning questions like, is it just a mere migration of the ways we have on site to online? Or are we totally talking about a change in process, a change in ways, a change in assessment, a change in appreciation for learning? The LSUD does not claim to have the answers to all of these, but um, as the vanguard of scholarship, we commit to keeping the discussion alive. I think that's a best one of the best ways or an initial step, uh, a good step uh, to find answers to these issues that is to keep the discourse alive and also share some of the practices which have proven to be effective or hopefully to be effective in our context. Eventually and hopefully we will find answers to these, but I think it's important to talk about them. We address these challenges and have an open mind in sharing, testing, and validating these ideas. I am sure that you'll have fun and the session will be productive. Good afternoon to all of you and again, welcome. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you, thank you, Salamat, for giving us the message. Uh, at this point, 
I would like to acknowledge, of course, our our um, online engagement will not be possible without the support and cooperation of our administrators, faculty and staff members from our participating school and organization. And now let us acknowledge our participating school, state and city colleges, universities, private higher education institution and organizations. Let us have a quick roll call of our participating schools based on our previous registration. We welcome our participants from Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, Asian In International Institute for Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Arnold Jansen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batangas State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Kalamba Doctor College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, Colegio de Montinlupa, Colegio de San Agustin, the Cup of Wisdom Academy, De La Salle College of St. Benil, De La Salle Ipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Divine Word College Ordaneta, DMMC Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College Mandaluyong, Philomer Christian University, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic College, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, and Madalag National High School, Aklan. Also, we would like to acknowledge and welcome our participants from Madagrita Marteri School, Manila Adventist College, Marvelous State Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Occidental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College, Recolet de Cavite, Santa Isabel College, Manila, and St. Jude College. Likewise, you would like to welcome our participants from St. Anthony de Carmeli Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental, Recoletos, University of Perpetual Health System, Dalta, Molino, University of the Cordilleras, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, Sister of Mary of Banox. University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose Tamayo Medical University, Surigao del Sur State University, MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy, Emilio Aguinaldo College, St. Thomas Beckett Academy, and Pandan Bay Institute Incorporated. We'd also like to welcome and of course acknowledge and give thanks to the Commission on Higher Education, to all the participating schools under the Department of Education, of course, from that uh, of the Capite, uh, we would like to acknowledge our participants from Eugenio Cabezas National High School and Buena Vista Elementary School. Welcome to our webinar and good afternoon to all of you. Okay, so at this point, I think we are now ready for our talk proper. And um, this afternoon, we have invited our resource speaker to discuss on a, on a very significant topic, pedagogical issues in online learning. To introduce our resource speaker, here is my co-host moderator, Dr. Graciela Mejia, the chair of our tourism management department. Good afternoon, Ms. Grace. Good afternoon, Sir Ruel. Magandang hapon po sa lahat ng participants natin from all over the Philippines. Sir Ruel, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Ms. So um, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce a resource speaker this afternoon. He teaches English, philosophy, research, and linguistics both in the undergraduate and graduate programs of De La Salle University, Dismarinas, Cavite. He holds the following degrees, Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, Minor in English and Social Sciences, Magna Cum Laude, Master of Arts in Philosophy, Doctor of Philosophy in Linguistics with Specialization in Applied Linguistics, Outstanding Dissertation, Bachelor of Laws, Cum Laude. He used to be the Chair of the Philosophy Department, St. Paul Seminary, Cavite, Chair of the Languages and Literature Department of BLSEB, Assistant 
Vice President for Academics and Research and the University Registrar of De La Salle University, Des Marinas. He was also the Chair of the University Curriculum Development Committee and Textbook Development Committee. Our resource speaker has published and co-authored several textbooks such as Learning English in Context, published by Anvil, Walking You Through Reading and Writing, Walking You Through Research, all published by Anvil, English Filipino Dictionary of Philosophy, published by National Bookstore, and English for Purposive Communication. In addition, he has both local and international publications. To date, he has refereed more than a hundred papers submitted for publication locally and internationally. He has presented his researches at local and international conferences. A resource speaker is a lifetime member of the Linguistic Society of the Philippines and Philippines Philippine Association for Graduate, Graduate Education or PAGE. He is to be the National Secretary of PAGE National and Chapter President of PAGE 4A. He is a regular member of other professional organizations such as Asia, TEFL, and British Council. He is the Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Journal of Graduate Education, a national refereed journal, and the former Editor-in-Chief of the maiden issue of the International Journal Language, Literature, and Culture. A former member of the editorial board of the International Journal of English Language Education and Asian Social Science Journal. A resource speaker is also a member of the editorial board of the following journals. English Language Teaching and International Referee Journal, Philippine Social Sciences Journal and International Referee Journal, and Academia La Saliana Journal, a referee national journal. He goes around the Philippines facilitating qualitative research seminar workshops, understanding by design seminar workshops, outcomes-based syllabus design seminar workshops at higher education institutions. Finally, he is a GI, a genuine Ilocano from Dolores Abra, Cordillera Administrative Region. Please welcome a resource speaker, Dr. Constantino T. Baliena, a.k.a. Sir Angkoy. Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. Let me now sh share my PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, uh, once again, uh, thank you for the in introduction and good afternoon to all the attendees, to all the participants and all educators and uh, happy COVID free day to all of us. OK, so uh, this afternoon we are going to uh, have a discourse on pedagogical issues in online learning. So to begin, uh, let's have a, a review and preview of uh, review of the past uh, seminars you have had as uh, sponsored by the La Salle University Des Marinas. So and a preview. So you already had uh, curriculum design, the care centered model, online module planning and preparation uh, that was December uh, 9, 2020. Education technology tool for synchronous sessions education technology tool for asynchronous sessions, online formative assessments, online summative assessments. That was February 24, 2021. And today we are going to have pedagogical issues in online learning. And you have, uh, we still have three more. So a preview, managing online learning, online laboratory courses across various disciplines. And finally, online practicum, thesis, field, study best practices. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the review and preview of our web webinar series on online learning. So let's start. 
So for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we just have uh, modest objectives. Uh, the first is to gain a broader understanding of what literature, by literature I mean the 2020 studies, so I limited myself to 2020 studies, say about the pedagogical challenges and issues that confront educational institutions across the globe. OK, so broader understanding, perhaps uh, a good number of you, most probably a good number of you already have had read some uh, literature on uh, online uh, learning. Second modest objective is to have an appreciation of what we have been doing when we shifted to online learning. So our vice chancellor for academics and research earlier on said that is it just a simple migration from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to online? So whatever initiatives we have had, we need to appreciate uh, what we did so far. And finally, to appreciate the practicability and beneficiality of the review, feedback, preview model when holding synchronous classes. And this is in fact the highlight of this afternoon's presentation, okay? So this is a model that is uh, to be used by the university uh, this second semester. So for the foci of my presentation this afternoon, uh, the first is an overview of ped uh, pedagogy. Second is uh, we have to uh, take a look at challenges concomitant to online learning. And uh, after that, uh, we identify some pedagogical issues and uh, the highlight which is the review feedback preview model when holding synchronous classes and finally let us continue our uh, discourse as was emphasized by the vice chancellor for academics and research but our talking point should be contextualized in our respective schools that when we go back to our respective de department uh, offices uh, departments and offices We'll be able to contextualize uh, our discourse, our narratives when it comes to online learning, that our online learning is not really a migration from uh, face to face. So we just migrated. No, it is a uh, an emerging modality uh, that we now face. So uh, we are going to contextualize our talking points. But let me highlight some limitations of uh, this afternoon's presentation. First is um, our focus is synchronous and uh, asynchronous modality. So uh, I'm not going to talk about assessments. I'm not going to talk about technology, uh, educational technology. I'm not going to talk about online platforms. So because these are outside the purview of uh, the presentation, as these were already uh, presented in previous webinars, so that we can just focus on uh, pedagogical issues in online learning. So just a brief background, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's now one year of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So um, we have had uh, challenging experiences uh, with regard to the virus COVID-19. So it's now one year. Uh, to be exact, it's actually more than one year because in China it started as early as uh, December of uh, 2019. So uh, some even claim that it's earlier than uh, it was earlier than uh, December. But in the Philippines, we uh, felt it uh, in February of 2020. Okay, hence one year of uh, the experience of uh, pandemic and. March 15, 2021, that is on Monday, it's the one year or would mark the one year of lockdown in the Philippines, the longest in the entire world. So March 15, so that would be on Monday. So uh, we call for a celebration. Is it a celebration? OK, I hope not. <laughs> OK, so um, and uh, another important backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, is the UNESCO uh, report that uh, since the, uh, the onslaught of COVID-19 virus, we have 1.5 billion affected students around the world. This is, uh, you can find this in teachonline.ca. So uh, there are many students affected. Of course, uh, economies of the different countries are affected. Uh, 
and etc etc but of course our concern is our educational uh, institution and especially our students and uh, teachers okay so these are just uh, some of uh, the important details that would uh, set the tone of our uh, presentation so we are still in pandemic we are still experiencing the pandemic and um, it's also one year uh, now that we have this emergency remote learning. This is uh, according to both Car Kurt and Sharma 2020. Uh, these are um, experts in education, uh, especially when it comes to educational design. So uh, they claim that it's really an emergency remote learning. Uh, the, uh, when we shifted from the face-to-face -face, uh, in March to uh, online uh, learning or remote learning, it was actually an emergency remote learning according to Buskart and Sharma 2020. And uh, of course, we experienced panic, we experienced uh, stress, we experience uh, tension as we shifted to uh, this emergency remote learning. And uh, one year of pedagogical challenge confronting HEI. So this is one year, one year, one year and one year. I hope that uh, today's uh, presentation is going to continue whatever discourse we have started in our respective institutions. Now, uh, so that we'll be able to uh, have a common ground um, in today's presentation in our, in our intellectual discourse, uh, let's go into uh, one of the important concepts in our uh, title, which is pedagogy. So pedagogy. So uh, just very quickly, uh, let's have uh, an overview of this one, of the word pedagogy. So from the Greek word, Peda and agogos. So peda, you know the meaning it's child or ped is child. Agogos is leading or teaching. So that's uh, the pedagogy. So uh, from the Greek, two Greek words. So <clears throat> now we are introduced to uh, several uh, words that evolved out of the two uh, Greek words. We have pedagogy versus andragogy. Met uh, metagogy and panico panicogy. Okay, so uh, you may say, oh, what are these? So we are just going to name things that we already have in mind. So like uh, these terms. So let us uh, go to uh, go over these terms that uh, will enable us to label whatever we have had in the past or we have been experiencing. So uh, when we talk about pedagogy, uh, the focus here is child as learners. So the learners are children. So by children, there are several definitions of children. Uh, it is uh, from uh, below 18. Any individuals below 18 are considered children. Okay, in the Philippines, that's also the definition of the legal definition of child or a child or children. So this is uh, highlighted by Knowles, uh, 1970 and 1980. So uh, Knowles is one of the indispensable experts when, it, when we talk about uh, pedagogy, especially andragogy. And the focus is adult learners. So if if we are facing adults, so um, uh, we have adult education, adult instruction. So uh, Knowles, Malcolm Knowles, 1968, 1970, 1980, and 1990, claimed that we have to have a different uh, design, instructional design, and this should be andragogy. So from uh, Andra, uh, Andra is a man or human being, uh, Goji, so a uh, Gogos, learning or leading. So it is learning or leading adult learnings, teaching or leading adult learners. So that's Andragogy. So for instance, if, um, if uh, we focus on independence learning in our class, when we focus on autonomy of learners in our class, uh, that is, in fact, one of the key principles 
that uh, pivot around andragogy. So independence, autonomy of learners, so that is uh, underpinned by andragogy. And I know uh, a lot of you are dealing with adult learners and uh, you would you you want to uh, maintain autonomy. You want to instill autonomy and independence when it comes to learning and especially now that we are uh, following online learning. And fi uh, another another goji that we have is metagogy. So it is a combination of andragogy and pedagogy by Stroshen uh, 2011. It was actually introduced by Stroshen. Uh, and um, this was uh, popularized by Propenko to 2009, Rolier Mashon 2011, in Paternon and Ray 2013. So it is teaching about teaching. That's why this is metagogy teaching about teaching. That means that when we reflect on how we teach, when we teach how we teach, that is metagogy. So uh, it is a marriage between uh, andragogy and uh, pedagogy from the viewpoint of st uh, and Okay, and there is a new um, a new word. Uh, this is uh, called neologism. It's a new word and if it's going to be used uh, by people across the globe, uh, it is going to be part of our lexicon and that is panic goji. OK, what is panic goji? So you can uh, check out literature online and um, this was introduced by uh, Kamenetz 2020. This was the situation we have had when we suddenly shifted from the face to face once upon a time conventional classroom that we have had in the past to online learning. So uh, we experience panic, we experience tension, we, we have had stress, our experience of stress. So this is teaching online classes during the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, there's panic because of the possibility that we are to be infected by the coronavirus, um, go that we were not. There was panic because uh, we, we were uh, limbo on how we are going to proceed with our education because education should continue on. Education should not stop. That is very clear to us as educators. Education should not stop. The virus should not be a stumbling block for us to proceed further. So, but of course, along the way, we experience uh, panic. So, uh, Kamenetz 2020 introduced this concept uh, which captures what we experienced the very first time that we shifted suddenly. It was not just, it was uh, not a, a methodic shift, by methodic shift meaning well-planned shift, but it was really a sudden shift from the conventional classroom to uh, online uh, learning. Okay, so our concern this afternoon, of course, is pedagogy, uh, since this is um, of the uh, terminologies that I have just presented, andragogy, metagogy, and uh, panic, uh, panicgogy. Pedagogy is the most stable of them all. Okay, although in Knowles uh, uh, 1968, 1980, 1990, Knowles uh, claimed that we have to shift from pedagogy to andragogy when we are dealing with adult learners. So uh, my take this afternoon is just we just maintain um, the concept pedagogy. We may incorporate uh, the principles of andragogy. So what is pedagogy? So just a quick overview. This is the science and art of uh, instruction based on design. So if you look at the definition of uh, pedagogy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are three very important uh, uh, concepts here, science, art and design. Of course, instruction is given because this is in the context of education. So let us try to um, very quickly deconstruct the definition. First is a science. Uh, what makes pedag uh, pedagogy signs of instruction? 
It is uh, science because uh, because it follows systematic methodology based on evidence. So when we uh, when we are uh, following a certain, this has its own method. So it is methodic. So it's not it's not hodgepodge. It's not chapsui. It's not pinakbet. In Ilocano, Pinagbit put together all the um, uh, ingredients and you have uh, Bagoong and that's it. Uh, with um, with uh, roasted uh, fish. So it, that's not, that's not, uh, it. it is methodic. So it is a systematic, uh, it has systematic methodology because it is based on objective observation. So uh, it is scientific because it has uh, some objective of, of observation aspect. It is based on evidence. It is uh, a product of experiment and or observation which serves as benchmarks for testing our hypotheses when we uh, carry out uh, these uh, principles. Uh, it may be uh, based on some induction. So based on the different experience we have had, then uh, we come up with uh, some kind of generalization and repetition. So uh, we, we do this, we did this in the past. It is effective, we are, we are doing it. It may still be effective with some modification. So you have basis for saying so. And uh, critical analysis. And of course, there is verification and testing. This is uh, science. Uh, this is the source. So that makes it science uh, of instruction. So our instruction should be based on uh, systematic methodology. It's not just I want to teach. I'm now teaching and that's it. Uh, whatever comes, uh, I'll just hit uh, anywhere I want to hit. No, that's not um, a systematic way of dealing with instruction. How about uh, looking at science as uh, from this other vantage point that science of teaching describes how teaching should go uh, in our classroom, could be virtual classroom or uh, our face to face class classroom. Our concern, of course, is our virtual classroom when we hold our synchronous session. It is the science of teaching that describes how teaching should go. On the other hand, when we talk about uh, pedagogy as the art of instruction, then we look at it as the unique way of teaching which unfolds as the teacher pursues this and other practices. So um, uh, science gives us the evidence and the art is now how we go about the actual teaching. Uh, so that's the art. Uh, the art side of pedagogy. Hence, uh, every successful teacher is an artist. That is uh, from a poor uh, Vu Center, uh, Yale, that Edu. Now, the final, final uh, important concept that we have in the definition of pedagogy is design. So design. So there are several uh, definitions of design, but uh, we'll just uh, limit it to uh, the following nomenclature. Design may be understood as method. Uh, design may be understood as an approach. Design may be understood as a theory, as a model, as a framework. For as long as our pedagogy is based on design, our instruction is based on design. So it is methodic. It, it, it has some aesthetic, aesthetic sense when we, when we uh, start teaching, but we are informed by a certain model or a certain a framework. At De La Salle University Das Marinas, we follow the care model of uh, pedagogy. So that is our design care model. You may have several models. Uh, it could be the different uh, isms, constructivism, or what pa uh, Father Beltran uh, is currently espousing, uh, convergence theory. So whatever that is that you have for as long as your our teaching, our science and art of teaching are based on well-grounded design. So we, we don't just say capriciously, oh, I'm going to teach this this way, I'm going to do it this way. And if you are asked, 
why are you doing it that way? They would say, ah, oh, that's based on my experience, that, that's all. What theory supports your doing it that way? I don't know. Let's let's continue our discourse. Let's talk about design. So at the La Salle University, we follow uh, care model. For uh, my subsequent presentation, ladies and gentlemen, um, the sources of my presentation uh, come from uh, studies, very recent studies on how classes have been conducted from the start of COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, since COVID-19 uh, really was uh, was pronounced to be a pandemic, uh, to be pandemic sometime in March of 2020, we had the first study as early as April uh, by Buscard and uh, the other one, 2020. So and we we have had series of studies. If you check out uh, different uh, studies published online, uh, we really have a lot. So I tried to um, do some delimitation of my uh, studying the different literature available by trying to focus on those studies with uh, the most frequent citations. So studies that um, uh, that became source, sources of my presentation highlighted the experiences of the following countries. Australia, this is uh, uh, in alphabetical uh, order. Australia, Ghana, Greece, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, New Zealand, uh, UK, uh, the UK, the US of A, Pakistan and Portugal. So uh, what we are going to discuss uh, in, a, in a short while as the the different challenges and issues would come from these studies. They do not, uh, they did not come from me. OK, so from these studies, I tried to sift through all of these studies and then uh, came up, uh, came out with uh, the different challenges and uh, issues that will help us in our scholarly discourse when we continue our narrative on online learning. OK, fasten your bell. So let's talk about online learning. So um, I'm going to uh, take uh, Singh and Thurman 2019 in Dawan 2020 as the war, our working definition of online learning. Because this is also uh, the context of the presentation this afternoon. So online learning uh, encompasses learning experiences in synchronous or asynchronous environments using different devices such as mobile phones, laptops, etc., with internet access. In these environments, students can be anywhere, so independent. So when we talk about independent learning, uh, that is highlighted uh, uh, in Knowles and Dragogy and other students. So you know that synchronous is real time and asynchronous is not real time. OK, so at De La Salle University does Marinas, it is not or if you look at the if you look at the uh, definition here by uh, Singh and Thurman in Darwin 2020, it is or synchronous or asynchronous environment at De La Salle University. It is end when we say online learning at De La Salle University does Marinas, it is synchronous and asynchronous environments. Of course, uh, since we we are following the care model, we had uh, we came up or we came out with another modality. We call it uh, home based learning for students who didn't who don't have gadgets, who don't have internet connection. Uh, they can still continue with their uh, education, but on home based learning. But that is the uh, outside the scope of my presentation because ours is online learning. So online teaching is no more an option. It is a necessity. That is Dawan 2020. So online teaching is no more an option because before, prior to the pandemic, we had blended learning or hybrid uh, hybrid learning. Only if, uh, few individuals are uh, into it. So given the different uh, educational platforms that we have, 
we have had in the past still few would opt for blended learning and for online learning. But because of the pandemic, we had to shift to online learning. Hence, Boostcart 2020 would say it is emergency remote learning. I hope that at present it's not any more emergency, but online learning, the remote learning that we are uh, currently following in our respective schools is now part of our system. So outside panic goji. Online learning according to NPC because NPC recently came out with uh, with a document. Uh, you can check out on the net. NPC uh, claims that the conduct of synchronous online classes is considered the best substitute for face to face classes based on existing research and studies on the matter. So NPC, uh, the National Privacy Commission did their, uh, the, uh, whoever are in charge, did their homework. They read uh, existing literature, they read existing studies, and indeed existing studies uh, tell us that synchronous online classes is uh, considered the best substitute for face-to-face uh, -face classes given the pandemic. Okay, so um, now according to Kerry 2020, during this tough time, the concern is not about whether online teaching learning methods can provide quality education. That's not uh, our concern in the meantime. Uh, that would be our long term concern, but it is how academic institutions will be able to adopt online learning in a massive manner. OK, so this was uh, this paper was published in July of uh, 2020. So. Since uh, that was uh, we were in the middle of the pandemic, so pandemic started as, as early as March uh, when it was pronounced by the World Health Organization. So in July we had this as a pronouncement. So it's not supposed to be the cons our concern is not supposed to be uh, about whether online teaching learning methods can provide quality education because we need to continue learning. We need to continue the education of our children of this generation. We cannot afford to halt, to put it to a halt. We cannot afford to stop. We need to proceed further. So uh, hence we have this online learning. Uh, we have uh, different platforms. So how the different academic institutions uh, will be able to adopt online learning in a massive manner. So that was in July and we see the different experiences of educational institutions trying to adopt online learning in such a massive manner. Uh, Dawan 2020. Now, given the different literature I uh, peruse, the different uh, literature that I read on, uh, focusing specifically on um, pedagogy in the 20, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here are some of the challenges. Students find online teaching to be boring and unengaging because students want two-way interaction with which sometimes gets difficult to implement. So uh, you and I have had uh, sufficient experiences when it comes to online learning, online teaching. And uh, this research, one research uh, tells us, this is actually in India, uh, that students find online teaching to be boring and unengaging because it, uh, the teacher, it is the teacher talking and they couldn't see actually the teacher physically, it's just uh, virtually and uh, students would want uh, two-way interaction between uh, the teacher and the students, and this is kind of difficult. Yeah, we can interact with them. We can say, oh, uh, did you understand? We can have some feedback like, uh, do you have some questions, etc., etc. But this is limited because we cannot uh, require all our students to be on cam. Okay, 
So and uh, min uh, interaction is very minimal. So uh, students find this uh, boring and unengaging. Hence, this is a humongous challenge for all of us teachers. And uh, another is how to uh, engage uh, students. And uh, OK, could you just uh, wait a second, please? OK, how to engage students and make them participate in the teaching learning process. So this is, in fact, very challenging as a, uh, as a professor at a university. This is uh, this has been a challenge to me how to engage my students and make them participate in the teaching learning process. So the, uh, this is the one 2020. So um, this is from Zong 2020. The lack of resources in academic institutions and uh, the social marginalization of students were insufficient access and availability of the internet and the lack of latest technology affected organizational responsiveness and students' capacity to participate in uh, digital learning. Could you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, the context here is China. Uh, by the way, I forgot to include China in the list of uh, countries there earlier on. I forgot to include. Uh, this is the context here is in China, and China is um, is a superpower country. It's now one of the superpower countries. And there is uh, social marginalization of students. There is insufficient access and availability of internet, which we to experience in our country, uh, a developing country. Okay, so it's a similar experience. It's um, an experience that different uh, teachers across the globe, different educational institutions across the globe experience. And uh, several researches uh, tell us that students felt that conventional classes were more effective as compared to online learning. These are the different uh, papers published uh, in 2020. So Adnan and Anwar uh, 2020. This is um, in Pakistan. Yates and uh, Yates, Starkey, Eager, Ton and Fluid June 2020. This is uh, New Zealand. Narsi et al. This is in Malaysia. Karalis and uh, Raiko 2020. This is in Greece. So could you imagine these different countries, Pakistan, uh, New Zealand, Malaysia, and Greece. The different researches tell us that students felt that conventional classes were more effective as compared to uh, online learning. So the conventional classes, the face to face classes. So uh, that's what students feel because they were not used to having uh, online learning in the past. And given the pandemic, in the words of uh, Buskart and Sharman, this is emergency remote learning. So students in the past were not used to having this and there was a sudden shift because we couldn't afford to put to, to halt education. We cannot afford to put to halt learning. But uh, these studies tell us that still conventional classroom seem to be more popular for students than the online classroom. And um, in, this is in Pakistan, uh, the problem of internet. Perhaps one of the reasons why students claim that it's the conventional classes that uh, are deemed to be more effective was due to internet connectivity as uh, uh, accentuated on by Adnan and Anwar 2020. So this is a challenge, internet connectivity, which in the Philippines we also experience. Uh, slow internet connection. T sometimes um, the, uh, we lag. So sometimes uh, there are glitches. And uh, when uh, we have uh, moderate uh, wind, our internet connection is affected. So internet connectivity uh, is a challenge. 
Another challenge, according to Buscart and Sharma 2020, uh, by the way, Buscart and Sharma 2020 uh, gave uh, their paper, uh, their paper uh, had or has the most pre frequent citation, meaning uh, subsequent uh, studies on online learning went back to Buscart and Sharma. Uh, their publication was in April of 2020. So how do we institute teaching and learning on the grounds of a pedagogy of care, not purely didactic and insensitive grounds? Because uh, we know, uh, we know, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, when we are in our classroom, it is didactic. It is instruction that is didactic. And sometimes uh, there may be some uh, insensitive grounds by just focusing on the theory. What about care? What about care? This is a very important challenge, the, uh, a pedagogy of care. And De La Salle University Das Marinas follows a care model um, as our pedagogical underpinning. And, uh, now, so these are the some of the challenges. So I only took note of the of the dominant challenges that I uh, found in the different literatures. I it's actually more than twenty literatures. I uh, limited to literatures with more citations, uh, more frequently cited literatures, not more citations. Free, more frequently cited uh, uh, literature. So uh, these were the challenges that I was able to call. And with respect to uh, pedagogical challenges, we have the following. First, direct communication, personal attention, which is uh, emphasizing human touch and collaboration is deemed to be foremost pedagogical challenge. So you have this, Kiatun uh, is Dawan 2020, Adnan and Anwar 2020, uh, etc., etc. So um, direct communication, what is direct communication? Uh, in a uh, conventional face-to-face -face classroom or a modality, so the teacher directly communicates with students. The teacher has a uh, uh, could see the student and could see the reaction of the student. The student could see the reaction of the teacher. So there's direct communication and the teacher could make personal attention or uh, show some human touch. And collaboration is easier in, uh, in the conventional classroom. Hence, this is a pedagogical issue, especially on having some collaborative tasks that we give to our students given internet connection challenge. Another, the second pedagogical issue is uh, online uh, instruction. Online instructions facilitate feedback from learners, make learners ask questions and broaden learner horizon for the course content. This is if we, uh, if we strictly follow uh, some communication protocol with our students. Now, it is an issue here because uh, if we fail to uh, effectively put across our online instructions, then uh, feedback from learner is not facilitated. Uh, our learners may not even ask questions and uh, ultimately our learners may not be able to broaden their horizon for the course content. So the, uh, the issue now here is how can we make online instructions effectively facilitate feedback from learners? How can we make instructions uh, effectively make learners ask questions? How can we make instructions broaden the learner horizon for the course content? because our uh, learners are deemed independent learners when they go online. The, another uh, pedagogical issue is clarity, which is related uh, essentially to the earlier issue, is clarity in communicating what to do, how and when it had to be completed. Uh, when, we, when we, for instance, give uh, our modules, 
our lessons online, our assessments online? Do we communicate very clearly what students do, how students uh, deal with what we send them, and when these are to be completed? How are our instructions? How are our directions? Are the directions uh, and or do directions make students understand what they are supposed to do? How they are how they uh, are supposed to deal with the with the module or lesson or the assessment? So this is uh, accentuated on by Yates, Starkey, Egerton, and uh, Fluigen 2020. The fourth pedagogical issue is on motiv uh, motivation or lack of motivation, still uh, emphasized by Yates et al. So uh, how do we motivate our students to engage themselves in our online classes, synchronous or asynchronous uh, classes? Do students really have intrinsic motivation to go online learning? Or do they lack uh, this? In fact, um, this is uh, based on the literature that I read. This is a uh, good research topic to look into the motivation of students when it comes to uh, having online classes. And uh, this is from Rafi Vajis Kachi Kotichira 2020. If I'm not mistaken, this is uh, Indonesia. The students wanted uh, the duration. No, this is Portugal. The students wanted the duration of each class to be capped at a maximum of 45 minutes. What's the issue? Because this is uh, this is presented in in this one paper. The issue here is how long should synchronous session be? How uh, long should we be online with our students on real time, teaching our students on real time, and that is synchronous? So one research uh, tells us that it has to be 45 minutes. So at De La Salle University, Das Marinas, we follow. Uh, uh, the maximum of uh, 90 minutes, but that's the maximum. Uh, the, um, on the average, it's uh, 60 minutes, but at least it is close to uh, 45 minutes. So that means that the, the context of this research is actually uh, the students here were medical students. So medical students uh, are adult learners uh, from the vantage point of Noel. So uh, compared to our college students, senior high school students, junior high school students, elementary, if uh, they are online, if they if you follow online uh, synchronous modality, you go beyond 45 minutes. If these medical students could not stand to go beyond 45 minutes, how about our undergraduate students? How about our senior high school students? How about our junior high school students and our uh, graders? So this is the chat. The issue here is. Length of. Our synchronous session with our students, so so these are the uh, dominant pedagogical issues that I was able to call from the uh, different literature that I read uh, recently. Now, given those pedagogical issues and challenges, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I came uh, to uh, a realization that the Philippine experience, uh, which is online learning during the pandemic, is no different from those of the other countries as shown in the various literature. In Ghana, Swe uh, in the US of A, UK, uh, New Zealand, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Portugal, Greece, New Zealand. I think I mentioned all. So our Philippine experience is no different from them. So we need to celebrate that we were able to survive the latter part of last school year 
when uh, we were on a lockdown. And we are to we need to celebrate that we were able to uh, we have been able to not we not we were, but we have been able to uh, start our school year this year uh, for the Department of Education uh, in uh, October for the different colleges and universities. Uh, some uh, some uh, earlier than October, our university uh, sometime in September, and we are now uh, on the first week of the second semester. So it must be a, a celebration that we are not anymore in uh, the context of panic goji. We are uh, we have embraced online learning. So we are no different from them. We may have experience of internet connectivity problem, but we are no different from them. We were able to survive. So we are COVID-19 survivors in the context of education. Oh, so this, uh, this is my insight. Now the, the focus of uh, this afternoon's presentation um, is the model which I developed that's why I call it Ballenas Review Feedback uh, Preview Model, which the University, uh, De La Salle University, now um, uh, implements or employs this second sem. La let us look at the context of this review feedback uh, preview model. Okay, the context here is synchronous session. So it is synchronous session. Uh, part of the context is that mo modules here uh, are given uh, to students online. So uh, we have our own LMS. We have our school book. We call it a school book. All, mo uh, all modules are uploaded on school book, all assessments, etc., etc. And these are self instructional learning materials. So going back to the to some andragogical principles, uh, independent learning. So modules are uploaded. The students can independently uh, read the different modules and do the assessments with clear instructions and uh, they can survive. So that is the context of the RFP. Uh, this has been uh, this was tested in one sem uh, from September 2020 to January 2021. So uh, the review feedback preview model because it answers the question. What shall we do on a synchronous session? Just say 60 minute synchronous session. So we have RFP model. What is the R? Review. So uh, as I said uh, earlier on, uh, we have modules and modules and lessons uploaded uh, online. So in, in our case, uh, school book are self-instructional. So students, uh, given their own pacing, can uh, deal with the modules and lessons asynchronously. That's why at, uh, in the university we have uh, synchronous and asynchronous modality. So what do we do uh, when, for instance, if today were our synchronous session with our students, the first thing that we uh, are going to do in addition to some of the uh, after the preliminaries like prayer, etc., etc., is review. Review of the past modules. What do we focus on? We just focus on salient concepts because this is review. Okay. Uh, by the way, there's a, there's a problem here. Not previous. Uh, okay, it's previous uh, module. No, it's not a problem. So we review the previous modules that students already read presumably of course and lessons that they had read again presumably the salient points salient concepts then after that uh, we uh, review the different assessment vis-a-vis -vis learning outcomes because we are still following the outcomes based uh, education so the learning outcomes uh, as part of the review and then uh, that's it we do not spend so much time. If it were a 60 minute uh, synchronous session, the review would just be about 15 minutes. 15 to 20, 20 is, is already long. Um, the, the idea here is that, so may I uh, make this very clear. We did not have 
discussions with our students previously because they, they were given self instructional materials in the form of module because that is the definition of a module. After uh, a 20 mi 15 minutes or 20 minutes of review, then we proceed with feedback. And I would say that this is the focal point of the review feedback preview model. Why focal point? So uh, if you look at the different challenges and um, pedagogical issues, it's the interaction between the teacher and the student that is uh, dominant uh, in the different studies that we hi highlighted earlier on. And if we put this as the focal point of our synchronous session, then the, the interaction, although virtual with our students, uh, is facilitated. What uh, should be done uh, at this point? So I would say this is the bug. So uh, if you have if you have 60 minute uh, class, a synchronous class, I would say this should take uh, at least uh, 30 minutes. So what, what are the foci of feedback? So you now ask your students, uh, have you had some difficulties? What concepts do you find difficult to understand? Do you have some concerns? Could you raise them? Do you have some issues with, with respect to the assessments? Could you raise them now? So we give chance to students to raise their concerns. So it could be orally or they could uh, chat so because uh, for instance at De La Salle University, Das Marinas, we use MS Teams. So they could just chat if they are ashamed, if they are uh, shy uh, to say it, uh, then they can just chat. So uh, that is one of the fo fo foci of feedback. Second is the teacher's feedback. So since the teacher uh, was able to see the different uh, assessment uh, outputs of uh, students, the teacher can make some uh, feedback uh, to the students. Some asynchronous communications, for instance, uh, if the teacher uh, has some concerns with students with regard to communication sent asynchronously, then this is the time uh, that uh, the teacher can deal with it. So that is the feedback part, and I would say this is the focal point and this should take the, the longer part of today uh, of the uh, synchronous session with uh, our students. Because you may be wondering, why are we not going to hold uh, the real lecture as we did when we had our conventional face-to-face -face class? Research, uh, the studies tell us that um, it's not really migration as was uh, underscored by uh, the vicar. Uh, uh, Dr. Marco Saez. We did not just migrate literally from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to online. Online learning accentuates on independent learning and the teacher pr uh, provides scaffoldings. Yung mga scaffoldings? Uh, uh, scaffoldings pag nag uh, gumagawa ng building. So the teacher presents, uh, provides scaffoldings. So, um, since the modules are there, so students read it, so it should be the feedback that is the focal point here. What makes one lesson so very special that we are going to hold a lecture for 60 minutes synchronously? It's not quite fair with other lessons. Hence, the review feedback preview model. And the highlight of this model is the feedback to maintain direct communication with our students, at least virtually. And finally, the preview. So this is uh, for me uh, just about five minutes. So this takes the, the uh, shorter period. So the foci, uh, what do we present? Preview, that's why it's a preview. It's just an overview of the modules, lessons and assessments to be dealt with by students asynchronously from the current synchronous session, for instance, this is our, if this were our synchronous session, if this were my synchronous session with my students, then I would uh, give them a preview of the foci of the modules and lessons and assessments that they uh, are going to do 
from today until the next synchronous session, and that is two weeks from now. Preview. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, Balienas review feedback preview model for synchronous sessions, which uh, has been tested for one SEM, and uh, this SEM it is uh, being used now as a model at our university. Now, let's continue our talking points, like what Sir Marco said earlier on, but let us contextualize our talking points. I, um, I'm going to present to you some uh, talking points. First is collaborative tasks. In the different studies that I uh, read uh, on online learning 2020, collaboration is uh, least liked by students, but this is very important. So how do we make collaborative tasks interesting with our students? Let's continue the talking points. I'm not here to give you solutions as uh, Dr. Saez uh, made very clearly at the outset. We are not here to present solutions. We are here to share our uh, our viewpoints. We are here to share our our experiences in light of literature. That's why it is scholarly discourse. Our next uh, talking points, by the way, why contextualize? contextualized because we put it in our context, in the context of your respective schools. Uh, for instance, ABRA is a State Institute of Sciences and Technology. You talk about this in your context. Uh, the different schools, uh, Perpetual Help, for instance, University, you talk about this in your respective schools. So it is contextualized talking points. National Sciences, uh, uh, National College of Science and Technology, for instance, uh, you talk among yourselves, have some scholarly narrative discourse. Second is direct and personal communication between teachers and students. How can we maintain this? How can we um, observe this given our online learning modality? This is one important uh, demand of students based on research that there has to be direct communication, personal communication between teachers and students. How do we show empathy and care that is going to permeate our pedagogical design? Let's continue our scholarly discourse, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue our uh, talk, uh, our uh, narratives. What about online policies and guidelines? So that the, the National uh, Commission, uh, Privacy Commission came up with uh, some, some uh, policies and guidelines with respect to holding online classes, like uh, should it be on -cam? How do we deal with recorded sessions, et cetera, et cetera. Your universities, our universities, our schools, our colleges should have clear online learning policies and guidelines. So we will not be ending up having panic goji. And finally, to have our own pedagogy. Is it pedagogy? Is it andragogy? Is it andragogy, I mean? Is it metagogy or panic goji? I hope it's not panic goji. So let's continue our uh, scholarly discourse. Bonus, bonus, bonus. Uh, some research opportunities uh, that I was able to call. You may be interested to do, investigate students' opinions regarding online learning to examine the challenges faced by them. Not so much with internet connection, not, not any more of those because those are already established. What other challenges? Okay. Uh, we could do uh, a study now on the quality of learning uh, learning online because uh, the earlier studies in July 2020, so we should not be concerned about quality of instruction, just go on with the online learning. Now we have to be concerned about the quality of learning online. So perhaps we can start our scholarly investigation. And uh, we can also uh, have a study on motivation for online learning. So these are some bonus bonus research opportunities for those who are looking for possible research topic. 
Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, finally, this is my epilogue. Since uh, COVID-19 uh, has accelerated the process of online learning, Darwin 2020, what we teach in these times can have secondary importance. We have to keep in mind that students will remember not the educational content delivered, but how they felt during these hard times. With an emphatic approach, empathetic approach, I mean, not emphatic, but empathetic, caring approach, the story will not center on how to successfully deliver educational content, but it will be on how learners narrate these times. Buskert and Sharma, 2020, the most frequently cited uh, paper this 2020. Let us therefore continue our scholarly discourse on how we could improve our pedagogy, I hope not panicogy in action. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Sir So let's now move on our day. Sir, welcome to hear me. Okay, so, so uh, let's proceed to our first question. Uh, the question came from Mrs. Ricuerdo. So, magandang hapon po, ma'am. Sir Amboy, this is the question. What are the literatures or, or legal legal basis of SOPs in designing strategies in, this, in distance learning platform? What are the literatures or legal basis of SOPs and designing strategies in distance learning platform. Okay. Um, now, uh, you're using another terminology that is the dis distance learning protocol. Now, you're talking about uh, literature. So we have uh, literature. Uh, literature actually abounds when it comes to strategies on um, uh, carrying out learning uh, online learning but when it comes to the legal basis that is uh, that is uh, variable by meaning variable meaning it varies from country to country in the philippines um, it is the commission on higher education that uh, that sets the uh, the legal basis for tertiary education and dep ed for for um, Element basic education and uh, when it comes to privacy, uh, we have the National Privacy Commission. You can check out the, the net for all of this. Um, so uh, when it comes to literature, we have the we have those uh, uh, available on the net very recent 2020. Okay, legal basis that depends on the different countries in the Philippines. We have uh, that set by Chad, uh, Dep Ed, we have National Privacy, Commi uh, Privacy Commission. I hope okay. I was able to answer that. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Amboy. Then uh, for the second question, okay. so the emergence of a new pedagogy in a time of pandemic was anchored to technology which changed the way we teach and learn. As technology evolves, how do you foresee the post-pandemic pedagogical approaches. So how do you see, how do you foresee the post-pandemic pedagogical approaches? So that's the second question, Dr. Ambo. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I didn't get the first question. Let me answer the second question. Uh, then go back to the first question. Uh, oh, well, I Thank like you. the, uh, I like the second question because it is prospective. It is prospective. So what, what's gonna happen after the pandemic? Uh, I, I would say in the Philippines that would be uh, sometime 2022 <laughs> because because we are a developing country. OK, what's going to happen? What I foresee, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is one, a continuation of online learning offered by different universities who have the who have uh, strong, strong uh, platforms. 
Second, uh, so it's a continuation of online learning. Second is uh, proliferation of blended learning. So blended learning. So that is uh, the hybrid, a combination of of face-to-face uh, -face and and uh, synchronous. So uh, those are the the two points that I would see that's going to happen uh, after the, uh, as part of the post pandemic proliferation of blended learning and a continuation of online learning, full online learning. And I hope that in our university, uh, we go on with online learning even post pandemic. And I'm very, very uh, excited to continue with online learning. I would even prefer teaching online uh, online than going to the classroom because of the uh, many, uh, many advantages when we do uh, online learning. I, uh, I would go for that. So meaning uh, the, ped the pedagogy for those who go on with uh, online learning as a continuation of what we have this pandemic will just be a strengthening, will just be a revitalizing, will just be a fortification of what we already have. For those who go on uh, on blended learning, uh, if they if uh, blended learning is going to uh, proliferate, then we learn from what we experienced this pandemic. So uh, the, sh the pedagogical shift may not be really very, uh, very uh, difficult. It is, yeah, it is a lot easier because we were able to survive this pandemic. We are uh, COVID-19 survivors in the context of education. I didn't get the first question. Okay, sir. So let me read the preview, the first question. Po. Um, thus, the emergence of a new pedagogy in a time of pandemic was anchored to technology which changed the way we teach and learn. Was, could you say it again? Was the uh, um, emergence of, of a new pedagogy in a time of pandemic was anchored to technology which changed the way we teach and learn. Uh, actually, uh, when we talk about online uh, pedagogy, it's not actually new because online uh, learning has been there even in the past and we learn from distance education. We learn from uh, distance education, although that is a separate, uh, a separate concept. So uh, online learning has been in the past, and uh, we have a strong pedagogical uh, frameworks and uh, underpinnings. So uh, now, so it's not really um, something that is emerging. Perhaps I would say that it is something that is uh, trying to make itself uh, felt now because we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We cannot go back to our classroom. We cannot be there physically. So online teaching, uh, online learning, which is already part of uh, previous literature in the past, has now become uh, palatable to us and has now become popular. So I would say that uh, following Buscourt and Sharman 2020, instead of looking at uh, online learning or remote learning as emergency, from the emergency perspective of uh, continuing our education, I would say that there has to be stability by now. So, uh, so in short, it's not really. If you look at, um, if you look at literature, it, it is not really a uh, new emerging pedagogy. So, what we need to evolve is our own pedagogy in our respective institutions. That is uh, something that will be novel, something that will be new. Like in our case at Dallas University, Das Marinas, we were able to come up with the care model uh, pedagogical framework. OK, so I hope I was able to uh, to answer the very interesting question. Thank you so much, Dr. Baliana. So um, let's give a virtual round of applause to Dr. Amboy, a resource speaker for this afternoon. 
So again, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Baliena. So let's proceed to the awarding of certificate. Sir Well. Okay, thank you, thank uh, you. Um, Grace, um, I, it is okay to Dr. Baliena. I think we still have other questions that came in. Oh, okay. in our yeah, it is, it is all okay with me. It's um, only 3.31. Oh, okay. okay. So as I yeah, said, sir, in, gonna... fact, uh, in fact, in my presentation, uh, the feedback mm -hmm. session uh, in my uh, model, which is review, preview, feedback model, uh, review, feedback, preview model, uh, it is a uh, uh, feedback that should be given premium. So it's only 331 anyway, so it's okay, okay. with me. Okay, sir. So we still have okay. uh, yes. several questions in the chat box. So this is now the fourth question. Um, in your opinion, what are the keys in the developments that we would be able to decrease the challenges during this ODL? What, Again, are, the, sir, what are the keys in the developments that we would be able to decrease the challenges during uh, this uh, ODL? Okay, so I would say that we have to contextualize our talking points. So what I said earlier on, because one of the challenges is collaboration. I'm not going to talk about uh, technical challenges, internet connection. That's not uh, that's not my uh, that's outside the purview of my presentation. Uh, platform that's outside the present uh, purview of my presentation. But uh, how do we improve on our pedagogy? So that is, uh, I'm going to answer it uh, from that perspective. So uh, to to lessen, uh, to mitigate the challenge, let's continue our talking points. So collaborative, uh, our uh, the idea of collaboration, because this is this is an important uh, issue, pedagogical issue that you can find in existing literature in 2020. So how do we uh, go about that in our respective schools, in our respective universities? OK, how do we ensure that there is direct and personal communication uh, between us teachers and our students? Because after all, students will be uh, will forget the content of what we teach, but how we how we communicated with them, how we uh, how personally we we dealt with them will be remembered by them. The empathy and care that should permeat our pedagogical design. We continue that as our talking points in our respective schools. What online uh, learning policies and guidelines? This should be very clear at our uh, institutions. So what uh, what should be the given the different uh, pedagogical frameworks available? What is appropriate in our uh, in our context? So in your context, just say Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology. What do you think is appropriate in your school? Uh, the model that we are following may not be appropriate to yours because you have a different context. Uh, the the collaboration that we are going to institute in our university may be different from yours. So uh, these are the talking points. I hope I was able to uh, clarify that. Okay. So salamat po. Uh, Sir Amboy, can we proceed to the next question? Sure, now? by all means, okay. by all means. Thank you. Um, so this is the question. May I ask if there are studies comparing pedagogical issues in online and modular distance learning, which has a worse or better effect to learners? OK. Um, I haven't uh, checked on that because I concentrated on online learning, uh, especially how online learning has been carried out since March 15, 2020 until today that I'm speaking. So it is only literature that I can find uh, online. And we, we actually have hundreds of literature. So I, I delimited it to literature which are which have been frequently cited because if this literature is frequently cited, so it means that this may uh, this presents um, uh, important thoughts, important issues, important points that we need to uh, we need to consider. So at a modular 
aspect on distance education. No, I, I uh, didn't read on that because um, since I'm also an online learning mode or modality, so my readings are on online modes and uh, online learning mode. Okay, so sorry, uh, that's beyond my, uh, the scope of my presentation. So thank you though for asking. Thank you. Uh, and but but then, uh, just a note, just a note. Uh, okay. When it comes to uh, distance it, education, okay. modular instruction, we have uh, we have available. We have many literature, many literature uh, available uh, on the internet. We actually have many. I just uh, didn't read on them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Paul. And then for the next question, school choice is crucial in today's pandemic. Mm -hmm. As private institutions, what are your thoughts about quality reforms without causing much tuition increase to parents opting to send their children into private schools? OK, OK, that's an interesting question, although uh, it's outside my presentation, but I like the question because you know what I like in online learning? At, I, at our university, matriculation fees dramatically uh, went down, not tuition, huh? because when we say matriculation, matriculation has tuition and miscellaneous. The miscellaneous fees dramatically uh, went down. It dramatically went down. Of course, the tuition fee, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, uh, deal with that. It's, it's the matriculation because of the different uh, miscellaneous expenses, uh, fees that we pay, which we do not pay now given the online uh, modality that we follow. And it's good news to parents actually. So given the, uh, we are assuming that we are delivering quality education and with a lower, uh, cheaper cost compared to the face-to-face -face because it's really, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, I have uh, also a student, uh, my, my daughter is now second year uh, college at De La Salle University. If I'm not mistaken, um, miscellaneous fees went down as much as 70% because uh, I just paid last week. So I uh, fully paid the miscellaneous fee. So if I'm not mistaken, about 70%. That's good news uh, to us parents. While we, we institute educational reforms uh, for quality instruction, uh, we had uh, a dramatic uh, going down or decrease in our matriculation fee, particularly miscellaneous fees. But uh, it's good to have a study on that. So one of the studies that uh, we can do is as to whether or not we really are delivering quality instruction. Yes, sir. Totoo okay, po you. yan. Uh, <laughs> there's really a decrease doon po sa um, other fees ng students. Yeah, that's why I, I, I'm actually very, I was very happy. I've been very happy when I paid last week. I only paid last Sunday, I think last Sunday or last Monday. And then when I saw uh, this is the only, this is uh, the miscellaneous fee, I was really surprised. It was 70% uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's, if my math is correct, it's 70% uh, cut from the face-to-face. -face. Uh, yes, that's sir. why I like online, online learning mode at De La Salle University. <laughs> <laughs> that's very yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. So this is the last question okay. um, regarding uh, Panic Goji. So how is Panic Goji <laughs> different from emergency remote learning? Okay. So how is it different from emergency remote learning? Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, emergency remote learning is espoused by uh, Buskart and Sharman. Okay. Uh, these are Indian uh, uh, educators, expert in education. And um, the context here is in emergency remote learning, this was how we dealt with when we shifted from face to face in March. 2020 to uh, online, uh, fully online learning. So that's why emergency, it's just like uh, something happened. So how do you deal with the situation? Uh, so this is uh, an emergency situation. So we have to go online. 
So we do uh, things uh, this we learn from the literature on uh, of online learning. Hence it is it was emergency. It was emergency because that was in in uh, March 2020, April 2020, uh, May 2020. So just to to survive the, the second semester. But after the second semester, I don't think it's uh, or it's still an emergency, not anymore, because we learned from our past experience. Panic Koji, on the other hand, by Kamenets 2020, is uh, it's uh, delivering online instruction uh, during the pandemic, uh, because panic. Panic goji does not actually mean that when we shifted to this, we we have uh, we uh, had a lot of pa panic or uh, stresses. No, it's a panicky situation. COVID-19 pandemic is a panicky situation. Hindi uh, hindi paniki, eh? paniki, paniki. Uh, that is adjective. Uh, a panicky situation. It is a panicky situation. So whatever, uh, whatever, uh, uh, howsoever we deliver our online, uh, our online learning, Kamenets calls it panic koji. It is uh, teaching our learners in the context of the panicky situation. So uh, panicky situation because. We were in a panic actually when uh, COVID-19 was there uh, and still here, but now not anymore panicky situation because we are used to uh, having uh, uh, this as a situation. But uh, March, April, May, that was that was rather panicky situation. Hence, um, Kamenets came up with uh, her neologism, which is panic goji. But that's going to, uh, it is a neologism that I don't think it's going to uh, attain some kind of stability in in the lexicon of the English language. So good that my my specialization is also lexicography because there's uh, what we call stability of a word for it to stay, uh, for it to be part of the lexicon. So that is neologism. It's a new word. If it's going to stay for centuries, uh, for for decades, then it will be part of our lexicon. But it's not yet part of our uh, lexicon. Introduced by Kamenets 2020. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Beliana, for okay. answering those questions and for the pres for the great presentation as well. Okay, thank you. So it was a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. Okay. Sir Well, can we proceed to the awarding of the certificate? Yes, please, Miss Grace. Okay. So um um De La Salle University this morning, yes, uh, would like to present the certificate of appreciation to our very great uh, and prolific speaker this afternoon, Dr. Constantino Baliana or Sir Amboy for being a resource speaker in the webinar on pedagogical issues in online learning held this 10th day of March 2020 via MSTs. Signed by, by our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez, and our brother president, Brother Gus Elbuquer, FSC, President and Chancellor of DLSUD. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Uh, Amboy. Okay, oh, it's, uh, it's actually a pleasure on my part and thank you for the invite for making me part of this scholarly discourse and let us continue our narrative. Let us continue our discourse on online. Just uh, just uh, FYI, uh, in the past I used not to like online uh, online classes. Now I love so online uh, classes and online learning and if we go back to the conventional classroom, I would prefer online classes so it's a shift it's a shift yes, okay thank you so much for the invite thank you so and much thank you for, for the opportunity back to you sir well Thank you, Ms. Grace, and thank you very much, Dr. Amboy. Sir Amboy, marami pong salamat. That was indeed a very informative presentation, and I'm sure all our participants have learned a lot from that uh, presentation of yours. So at this point, we would like to thank all of you. Of course, 
everyone who made this um, online engagement possible. So once again, we would like to thank our speaker and also like to thank once again all our participating schools to all the administrators and faculty members, staff members on behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. We would also like to thank all of you, everyone, for joining this afternoon. And of course, the technical support team of our DLSUD Center for Innovative Learning Programs, headed by Sir Paul Anthony Notorio. Thank you, sir. And the members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, headed by Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dean College of Education, and of course, Engineer Rizaldi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology, guided by, of course, our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you very much. Marami pong salamat. Before we finally come to the end of the program, here are some important reminders. Of course, we still have our upcoming webinar, so please mark your calendar. Our next webinar will be on March 24, 2021, and that is on that is about managing online learning. So we hope to see all of you again on March 24. That's our next online engagement. Now let's talk about uh, the certificate. So to get your certificate, kindly log on to dlsudace.edu.20.org. Go to courses, click the enroll, input the access code, which is for this webinar, it's qmmt dash KDUJ. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. If you have encountered any problems about your registration and your e-certificate, please email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We now come to the end of our webinar. Marami pong salamat. That ends our seventh online engagement. Again, thank you very much. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. forever. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Paul.